Okay. Hello, it's Chapo for Monday, May 16th. And uh, let's just get into it with uh, this week's guest. We are joined by Nick Bryant, uh, author of The Franklin Scandal. Now, uh, close listeners of the show will uh, probably be familiar with, uh, you know, maybe some like a few veiled references to the Franklin credit scandal that we've uh, made reference to in the past on this show. Uh, But today we're doing a deep dive into the history of this. And I'll start here. Nick, uh, for someone who's not aware of it, if they come across uh, something called the Franklin credit scandal, it sounds pretty dry and pretty boring. But it really doesn't give, uh, just doesn't do justice to how truly nightmarish and uh, terrifying uh, this scandal and the, the, what your book is about. So I guess like in, in the broadest strokes for someone who is not aware or hasn't heard of the Franklin credit scandal or Larry King or Craig Spence, or any of the, de- the truly nightmarish details of this story, what are, the, what are the broad outlines? Like, if you had to describe to someone who'd never heard it before what the Franklin credit scandal is. Do you, you want a, a light rendition with maybe put on some light, happy music? or uh, <laughs> you Now, uh, no, give us the, the raw shit. The Franklin scandal, a story, my book is entitled The Franklin Scandal, a story of power brokers, child abuse, and betrayal. And it's about a... There was an innocuous sounding Franklin Federal Credit Union in Omaha, Nebraska, not affiliated with Ben Franklin, not affiliated with Franklin Stoves, but nonetheless called the Franklin Credit Union. And it was a front for a nationwide pedophile network. Its manager was uh, Lawrence E. King of Omaha, Nebraska. And he had a fellow pimp in Washington, D.C. called Craig Spence. They ran this nationwide pedophile network. And at Craig Spence's home, which was in a very opulent part of uh, Washington, D.C., Craig Spence was a CIA asset. And his home was had a bunch of little cameras all over it. Um, and it was wired for audiovisual blackmail. And King would fly kids in to Washington, D.C. quite a bit. I've got a number of their, um, their flight receipts. And the parties would go down at Craig Spence's. And if politicians put themselves in a, or any kind of power broker, put themselves in a compromising position, they would in fact be blackmailed. And what happened with uh, the, the credit union is Lawrence E. King used the credit union as his personal ATM, and he was inexplicably able to stave off audits for about four years because a federally funded uh, or federally insured credit union should be audited every year, but he was able to stave off. And then all of a sudden the FBI came in and he was $40 million short. So the Nebraska Senate formed a subcommittee to look into the money because they saw that there hadn't been any oversight to the Franklin Credit Union in well over four years. But when the Franklin Committee formed, a number of social service personnel came to the came to the senators and said, there's a pedophile network. King is running a pedophile network. And the social services personnel had gone to um, state and federal law, law enforcement, and they were just ignored, completely ignored. And in my book, I show how disingenuous uh, state and federal law enforcement is. And this network was big. I mean, Epstein's network was around for 25, 26 years. Most likely, this network was around for about 12, but I think it was much, much bigger than Epstein's. Epstein required one grand jury to cover it up, and this network required three grand juries. And I don't know if your listeners are familiar with how a grand jury works, but this, it's, a, it's a very important part of this story. When people think of grand jury, they think that the gods of jurisprudence have spoken, but uh, that's not the case. In a grand jury, grand jurors are just people that have shown up for for jury duty, and they've been funneled into a grand jury. And there's nothing special about them. They've just been funneled into a grand jury. And a special prosecutor is chosen, and he shows the grand jurors the evidence that he deems is important. And there isn't any anything adversarial. So he can take the grand jurors wherever he wants to take them by showing them evidence, by calling witnesses. And this particular grand jury was very, very, well, all the grand juries to cover up the Franklin uh, network were very, very corrupt. Um, 
there was an esteemed New York judge said that special prosecutors of a grand jury have so much power over grand jurors that they could get them to indict a ham sandwich. So in this case, in, in Nebraska, these two grand juries, one state, one federal, they uh, didn't indict a single perp. And there were a lot of perps, but they indicted two kids that refused to recant their abuse. And uh, one was Paul Benassi and one was Alicia Owen. Paul was looking at 60 years from the state grand jury, and Alicia was looking at 160 years um, from the state grand jury and 40 years from the federal grand jury for her, her grand diamond. So Alicia was looking at, uh, at, at 200 years in prison, and she was indicted when she was 21, and she refused to recant. And a kangaroo court sentenced her to between nine and 15 years. Now, it was very important that Alicia Owen be found guilty because they needed to sanctify the grand jury that said that the child abuse allegations were a quote unquote carefully crafted hoax. But they didn't say who carefully crafted the hoax. So it was a bunch of young drug addled kids who had been repeatedly molested. I mean, they weren't carefully crafting anything. So Alicia all the dirty tricks that can be used in a court of law were used in Alicia's case, and she was found guilty. And it, now here's a kid, you know, I mean, and she was trafficked as an adolescent. She was found guilty and sentenced to between nine and 15 years in prison for perjury. And actually, her perjury case was the longest criminal uh, case in Nebraska history. And the authorities really tried to destroy her. They put her in solitary for two years. And um, I've got a podcast. I've just started a podcast, and I told you. And Alicia is the uh, first person that I interviewed on my podcast. I mean, yeah, you, you describe this as a universe that encompasses the refined industrial destruction of children and its cover-up. Uh, you mentioned the Jeffrey Epstein Network. And, you know, reading your book, the similarities between uh, what Lawrence King and Franklin Credit were doing and their connections to Washington, D.C., one can't help but notice the staggering similarities between both the men involved in it and the nature of their crimes. And then, like, you know, secondary to the, like, unspeakable abuse of children that's going on here, uh, like, the, the thread that unites them is some staggering connections to the intelligence community in the United States. Could you talk about uh, Lawrence King, the guy who was, like, you know, the, 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 the main, like, uh, you know, pimp and, you know, it's, it's human trafficker involved in this? Could you talk about his connections to... Uh, William Colby, the former, oh, no, sorry, uh, William Casey, the former CIA director. Well, King and Casey, Lawrence E. King and Casey were very good friends. Um, here's my hypothesis, uh, because the two primary pimps, as I said, were Lawrence E. King and Craig Spence. They were both in Southeast Asia during the uh, Vietnam War. K King was uh, in Thailand, and he had a top security clearance, and Spence was in um, Vietnam covering the war for ABC. And both were inveterate, hardcore pedophiles, unrepentant pedophiles. And my surmise on how they came together is that they were probably, both of them were probably busted molesting kids in Southeast Asia. And at some point, they had a nexus with intelligence because. Craig Spence was definitely a CIA asset. And I wrote a second book about this called Confessions of a DC Madam, The Politics of Sex, Lies, and Blackmail. And I get into um, the CIA connections a little bit closer, or the intelligence connections. So very much like uh, Epstein, the Franklin Network was definitely a, uh, an outlet for intelligence to compromise people. And, and here's the thing. These... U.S. attorneys in both the Franklin Credit Union scandal and, and the Epstein scandal, these U.S. attorneys were told to stand down. And, um, and there's only two people that have the power in the United States to tell a U.S. attorney to stand down. That is the attorney general and uh, the president of the United States. 